Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you because you promise and you always keep your promises. And you are here because you spoke. Speak to us, Lord. We are not able, we are unworthy, but you are strong, you are able, you know us, you speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, how many of you feel the presence of God here? Hallelujah. I mean, if you don't, there's something wrong with you because Jesus said, but you are three are gathered in his name, that he will be. So he's here, and I experience the presence of God. That's why I wanted to continue worshiping, you know, shouting, and when the noise was there, it's easier for me to sing. I don't sing nicely, and with all that voice and noise, you know, drowns out my singing. You know what I mean? Oh, the presence of God is so good. I'm saying, hey, you know why I come here to preach? Because I get paid a hundred dollars every week. No, that's not true. There's only one reason. I want the young people, I mean everybody, especially the young people, to get stronger as each day passes. That's the only thing. Don't, don't, don't take any other reason. Don't even think I'm eager to preach. It's, there's a lot of uh, speaking goes, that goes on through the weeks for me because I'm a teacher. I'm a voices. You know what? But this I love. This I love. And I directly heard from God that I need to come here. That's why I said that one day and the pastor is using it. Now, he doesn't request me anymore. He says, you've got to be here. Wow. I love the man of God. Earlier he would say, did you come? Now he says, gotta be here. I'm just joking. He's a compliment. But I like this. You know, I, I, I want to take a few minutes and take this in a different way. Because as I was praying, I said, God, speak. And God says, there's only one thing that you need. One thing. God's presence. Amen. So I'm going to go through the whole Bible from the Old Testament into the New Testament. That will take me 10 hours or 15. And I know you're going to wait here because you want to listen to the word of God. See? So I won't take that much time and I'll try to teach you about God's presence. Charles, his wife is here. I see both of them. Hey, thank you. We've been praying, not every day, but we've been praying and it's so good to see. You know why I brought that here? Because one day we will be with Jesus. Hallelujah. One day we will be with Jesus. You know, they were talking to each other, I'm sure. Oh, they were not just looking at pictures for us, you know, a long time back, we only had pictures to look at. Look at your picture. My wife, that's my wife, she's far away. And then later on, emails started coming, you know, and then we started sending emails to each other. And then Facebook came, and everybody started seeing everything. And WhatsApp was there, Skype, you know, face-to-face -face live video chat makes a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But you know, you ask Charles and you ask his wife, Hey, was that enough for you all? Like, video chatting every day, you know, Skype. No, no, no. They wanted to be in each other's presence. How many of you really want to be with Jesus? Don't put your hands up for anything. Hey, that's all we need. We don't need jobs. We don't need education. You know what I mean? If we have Jesus, we have it all. <laughs> and it's easy to sing. You know what we sang? You're calling me for a deeper walk with you. You're calling me deep. Every week we sing the same thing. You're calling me. Yeah, God is calling us for a deeper walk. But we go back and then we go back to give me the job, give me the job. I'm asking and praying for the job. Give me the job, give me the job. It's not bad to pray for all that, but I want us to change our style of prayer and say, Lord, you know what I need? You know what I mean? You give it to me. How many believe that? Hey. So what I need, Jesus, is your presence. As the Senior says, your presence is heaven to me. And to get into God's presence, you have to open the Bible, read. You have to get down on your knees and pray. How much time do we take for that? No, no, no. One of these days when I preach, I'm going to pass out pieces of paper. I'm going to ask you to write how many minutes you pray in a day or how many minutes I pray because I'm a preacher, I should write that and then I'll be ashamed because I know I'm not praying enough. How many are with me? How many know that you are not praying enough? Put your hand up. Okay? So we need to take action. We can't come every week and you say, this is what I'm going to do. 
So I just wanted to start this off by saying that if you love somebody, you want to be in their presence. Let me say that again. That's why I took that example. If you love Jesus, you want to be with Jesus, so you will pray. Amen. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite. You say you love Jesus and you don't have time. You don't read the word of God. You're a hypocrite. Hey, but young people, I want to tell you something. God has so much more in store for all of you. You cannot estimate what God has prepared for you. I'm just standing here and I am prophesying. Young people here, if you can take your, you know, your prayers to a higher dimension, take your prayers to Jesus, you know what I need. I need your presence, Lord. Everything else you will give me. If you can pray this prayer, you are going to be used by God in mighty ways. And God does not need your ability or anything for that. If your, His presence is in your life, that's all we need. The story began in the Garden of Eden. God walked with them, didn't he? And then they sinned. Sin drives God's presence away. What Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden when they sinned was the presence of God. I'm going to take it slowly now. Number one. Number two. Did God give up? No. Long story short, he chooses Abraham. He makes a people for his own and he then gives them his law, the Ten Commandments. But you we think that's all God did. No, no, no. The chosen nation of Israel is not special because God gave them the law. But because God's presence was with them. You remember the pillar of fire and remember the cloud, remember God's presence, remember how God spoke to Moses like a friend talks to a friend. That's what God gave them, the presence of God. Number three, fast forward. Now you come to the period of the kings and then you see a temple was built. And we think the temple is primarily a place of sacrifice. That's what we think. But no, the temple. Just like the tabernacle was the presence of God. Come on. Number three. Number four. I'm going through history. The people, the, the nation of Israel was exiled. You remember the exile? What did they lose? They did not lose their kingdom. What they lost was the presence of God. And then did God say, yeah, done with these people. You're all the same. No. God said, you know what? I'm going to do something special. I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ. And then he came, took on bodily form and walked with us on the face of the earth. I hope you understand the summary of the Bible. God is love. Come on now. And God wants to be with us. That's why Jesus is Emmanuel. And we are the same. We are like, we need the toys. It's good. Just like the fruit. Oh, that's so good. It's the same story. It is the same story. For 15 years you'll pray for your children. Another 15 years you will pray for their jobs. Another 15 years. And then one day you're like, woman just passed away. What did he gain? Nothing. I hope we understand that God loves us so much. That he wants us to experience his presence. Do we serve a living God? Come on now. Do we serve a living God? A living God can talk to us. Come on. And we can. How many of us are hearing from God? How many? We can keep saying Jesus is alive. If Jesus is alive. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today and. So if Jesus spoke then. He can speak now. Come on now. We should be hearing from Jesus. Who should I marry? Don't you think Jesus can tell you? What job should I do? Don't you think Jesus can tell you? We need the presence of God. Now, when you go to the Old Testament, I am looking at verses in Deuteronomy chapters 26 to 28, but we don't have time to take all that. But I want to show you four things that God wanted Israel to do. Four things. This is again taken from chapters 26 
verse 1 to chapter 28, verse 14, Deuteronomy. Okay, you can go back home and read. It'll be tough for you to put up the verses. But in verse 2, the Lord says, The land that God is giving you as an inheritance is a place that he is choosing as a dwelling for his name. Are you listening to me? So God wanted them to do four things. Number one, verse five. They were to recite their history in the presence of God. Tell your children what I have done for you. What is that? Your history. You know when you come to America and when you get some money or when you get a job or something, people sometimes change and they don't even know they changed. I've seen so many people, they're like, oh, they never forget your roots. Remember that once you were a sinner, I'm not talking about money alone, once you were a sinner and it's the Holy Spirit that brought you to Jesus, come on. The Bible says no one can come to Jesus except by the power of the Holy Spirit. So. It is the Holy Spirit. I still remember 17 years of age when I heard Kahnemachin preaching. That man of God is still alive. That was the time when he came out. Hallelujah. I heard his word. I didn't even know him either. But I heard the word of God and I gave my life to Jesus. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. So what are we supposed to do? Recite the praises of God. Tell everybody about God. Number one, recite the history. Number two, verse 10. This is Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 10. They were to prostrate themselves in the presence of God. <laughs> Means fall flat on your face and worship God. That is a sign of humility. Hey, do you know that standing up in the presence of elders, is a sign of respect, come on. Standing up, you're not sitting. In the presence of God, you're like, God, what are we? Nothing. And then you fall. Humbly in the presence of God. So that means you have to worship God, not in style. Nothing wrong with style. Not worship God with the loud and boisterous noise. That's okay. And I love the music. But once in a while, the singing team here, I love you, you know that. Can you just simply shut off the music and just you know, try practicing that? Suddenly in the midst of the singing, close everything and then listen to the people singing. Amen. Hallelujah. Give us a chance to sing, man. <laughs> I'm shouting at the top of my voice, nobody can <laughs> But it is true because you are worship leaders. What are you trying to do? You are trying to usher in the presence of God. So people need to also worship. Number two, you are to humbly worship God. Number three, in the presence of God. This is from verses 9 to 16. In the presence of God, they were to pray for God's blessing on his people. You, know, you don't pray for yourself every day. Oh, bless my grandfather, my grandmother, my father, my mother, my children, my, 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 my. my. That's why you heard this before. I is the letter in sin. The middle letter. Sin. I. You are supposed to pray for God's people. How many of you pray? For the pastor and the family. Don't put your hand up. How many of you pray for the man of God? Because everybody is under attack. But do you know that he and his family are more under attack? Do you know that? Leaders are more under attack. Come on. How many of you pray, pray for all the pastors in this church? Every week, do you? Or is it me, 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 me? So, in the presence of God, you are to pray for God's blessing on His people. Number four. I like this. This is chapter 27, verse 7. In the presence of God, you are to have a spooky face and speak in an unnatural sound. Because it's the presence of God, so you go like, you create an atmosphere, you know, you go, Sir Rajatani, you know, you, you just, no! The Bible says in the presence of God, they were supposed to rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Hey, no, I didn't hear you, come on now. Rejoice. rejoice. They were so, what do we rejoice in? You know what I rejoice in? The job that I have, 
the children there going, no man, I rejoice in the victory of the cross of Jesus Christ. That's what I rejoice in. That's why I worship God. Because I forget everything. You know why we have to close our eyes even during worship? If you do not know the lyrics, please look at it. But sometimes it's distracting. Because by your side you will see a person not in this church, some other churches, you know. <laughs> I don't want to see those people, I want to see the angels in heaven because non-stop they're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want to worship and celebrate the victory of the cross of Jesus Christ. And no enemy from hell can stop me from doing that. That's why we sang, His praise will ever be all. Practice what we sing. His praise will ever be on my lips. You know why? Because he gave me victory. He gives me victory. And he will give me victory. The victory of the blood of Jesus Christ. The victory of the cross is what we celebrate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to finish off by saying what takes away the presence of God? And before that, you know, before you come to Jesus and after you come to Jesus, there must be a difference. Does the world see the difference in you? I want to show it to you in the Bible. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 7, it says, God had rescued his people from misery, toil, and oppression. I don't have time to explain all this. If you are in Christ and you are still going through, oh my God, oh my life, oh my goodness, oh, you are in misery. You are toiling. You are being oppressed when you come to Jesus. Yes, we have our struggles. Yes, we do. But in the midst of every struggle, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ah! You know, that's enjoying the presence of God. That's what people need to see in your life. So go out and celebrate the victory that Jesus has given us. I feel like preaching now, you know. I think I've begun. I feel like it. I feel the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What takes away the presence of God? Sin. Sin. Hey, if you are walking away from God, the Holy Spirit is consistently telling you. I want young people to stay there for a minute. If it's not culture that's telling you or tradition or anything, it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you and sometimes you fight, 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 fight. Don't do that. Don't do that. Sin drives God's presence away from His people. But God wants His presence to be experienced by us. So if you're doing anything wrong, thinking anything wrong, planning anything wrong, wrong is wrong. Look at it in the light of God's word, not with traditional culture, in the light of God's word. I'll stop it there. But sin, and God wants us about so many things. I wish I had like four hours to teach this. Verses 14 to 26, God talks about idol worship. That might be Facebook. <laughs> in the morning. <gasps> what are my friends? How many likes did I get? That's your idol. What do you run to in the morning? What do you run to? What are you eager for? It's easy to say. What do you run to? Early in the morning, God, will I seek my face in David says? Do you? I will worship dishonoring families. Respect everybody that you ought to respect. Honor your parents. I said, honor your parents. Yeah. That's in the Bible. Amen. Theft. What is theft? Covetousness. Have you heard that word before? <gasps> I wish I had a better car. No. Thank you, Lord, for this broken car. That's all I need. Plus your presence. How many understood? I'm giving you an equation for life. Anything plus the presence of God is victory. Lies then plus the presence of God is victory. Hey, hey. The Red Sea 
plus the presence of God is victory. Are you with me? The fire plus the presence of God is victory. We pray, pray for miracles. How many praying for miracles? I am. I expect miracles. I know my God gives me miracles. I know my God can do anything. You heard Achen preach just a few minutes back. Oh yeah, he said nothing is in his hands. We are just vessels. Believe it when you pray. Believe it. God can do it. Oh my God. I wish that there was a word that could explain anything. I want to say God can do anything. <coughs> All right. There are so many. The list is high. But in today's world, sexual immorality is something that drives God's presence away. Murder, bribery, leading the blind astray. It's all in those verses. Go home and read. Okay, so sin takes God's presence away. What brings God's presence? Is it like you go and say, Jesus, come in, come in, come in. No, no, no. Obedience ushers in God's presence. Not obedience to stay out of trouble. That's how sometimes people obey. Obey. <laughs> you obey the speed limit because you don't want to take it. Don't try that with God, please. I want to be blessed, so I obey. No, no, no. I obey because I love Him. Come on. You obey your parents, not because you have to, but because you honor them and you love them. And God is our Father in heaven. You obey Him, not to stay out of trouble, but because you love Him. He gave everything for you. Come on now, He didn't He? And so He said, Oh, I will obey you. Obedience brings in God's presence. Obey consistently. Obey 24 hours a day. Obey in everything. Seek God and ask Him, Lord, what should I do? And obey Him. The answer is in God's Word. Come on now. It is in God's Word. Take it, read it, and obey Him. And the Bible says, if you obey God, you will enjoy all His blessings for you on the face of this earth. You will. Yeah. Blessings. Four types of blessings. And I'm done. Now, I, I, I want to talk about Psalm 46. <laughs> I don't have time, but Psalm 46 is a great... I, I just touch a few verses here and there. The presence of God in the Old Testament was always associated with Jerusalem, which is the city of God. Are you with me? So Psalm 46 says, God is my refuge. And then there are so many verses. Verse 5 says, God is within her. Verse 7 and 11 says, the Lord Almighty is with us. Are you listening? Verse 4, the second part says, the holy place where the Most High dwells. So God dwells. God is within her. Almighty God is with us. That's in the Old Testament. That is the psalmist. And when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus said, my temple, my body is the temple of the living God. Come on. And then Jesus' body was broken for us. Are you listening? And now we, have, we are in the presence of God. We are in the presence of Jesus. This is not a magic show. This is not fake. This is the truth. This is the truth. This is the only truth. Everything else is a lie. The only truth is Jesus Christ is God. And no one saves except Jesus Christ. That is the truth. No fashion, no culture, no education, nothing saves. Only Jesus saves. Thank you, Lord. You know, there are so many verses that I wrote down. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. It says in the New Testament, God's presence is not in a physical temple, but God's presence is with His people. So where is God now? Where is Jesus? Here. You and I, we are His people. So Jesus is here. I believe it. I don't know. About you, but I believe it. I know. I experience God's presence. How do you practice God's presence? How do you practice God's presence? In life, there's always lack of time. There's always so much more to do. Anybody with me? Or am I alone? It's like 24 hours of hard enough. Oh my God, I'm busy. People are so busy. But in Psalm 46, verse 10, God says, 
Be still. And know that I am Lord. Stop all your business. Busyness is business. Stop it right there. Your toil, your misery, only one answer. You know what you got to do? Get down on your knees. And the Lord, this is too much for me. I know the answer is in you. Get down and say, Lord, come on. I need your presence. Can you do it? Namaka Jeevati Randi, the Devati Day. Sanitya. മനുഷ്യൻ്റെ <laughs> 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 You know, God will give us all these things. What is Jodhi that I do? It's a God that I am. And then the issue that I am. If I have my Jesus with me, nothing else matters. Nothing. So we need to pray, Lord, I need your presence. That's all I need. And then all of us say the prayer. The other prayer is not all of us. If you say, I'm going to 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 say, നിന്റെ കാര്യം മറന്നേ മറ്റുള്ളവർക്ക് വേണ്ടി പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കും സ്വന്തമായിട്ട് ഒറ്റ കാര്യം പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കും ലോഡ് ഐ നീഡ് യു പ്രസൻസ് എന്തിനാ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഐ ക്യാൻ റിഫ്ലക്ട് യുവർ ഗ്ലോറി അതിനാ ലോഡ് ഐ ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് ലുക്ക് പീപ്പിൾ ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് സി മൈ ബ്ലാക്ക് സ്കിൻ ആൻഡ് റിങ്ക് സ്കിൻ people when they see me should see your love come on young people do you think it's possible it is what finally what does this person give you i hope i'm getting the message across important thing be still and know that god that he is god the bible says be still and know that i am god just i this what can god do They're good. They're trying to help, right? What can nurses do? Come on. What can they do? They're all good people. What can they do? Everything is with the one who is still on the throne. His name is Jesus. So what do we need? We need his presence. Four things and I'm quickly done. What does his presence give you? The whole world is looking for peace. Have you heard of peace? That's what everybody wants. The biggest word used in America is stress. I am so stressed out. 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 Hey, you are so stressed out. I am so stressed out. I am so stressed out. In the presence of Jesus, you only see Jesus. You don't see your play. You don't see you are you know anything on you only see jesus and when you see jesus you just get excited I, i mean it you worship him so god gives you peace that's what it says in psalm 46 verse 1 and 2 god is a refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble therefore we will not fear peace is the absence of fear <laughs> people fear so many things they now fear fear itself do you you heard that song fear is alive oh. you don't listen to music like i do a uh, scientist really came up with a new song you should try practicing that give me faith like daniel in the lion's den have you heard the song anybody hey these are the four lines of the song i didn't mean to say that i can't sing so i can say it give me faith like daniel in the lions den give me hope like moses in the wilderness give me joy like david lord be my presence so that i can face all my giants with confidence hey come on there are so many giants you need to face it with confidence and there's only one thing that will bring in the confidence the presence of jesus christ that's all that will give us the confidence
That's why he will say, I am strong because I know who holds my hand. Yeah. That's why we do not, week after week, I keep saying these things, we do not walk by sight, we walk by faith. I don't care my, what my circumstances. Number one, God gives peace. Number two, joy. The world doesn't even know that word, joy. Ask them, what's joy? Mm -hmm. Happiness? No. Happiness is because of things that you have. Joy is inner. Joy is like you don't have anything, but you're still smiling. You're not pretending. Joy is... Joy is inside. It doesn't depend on what you have. Verse 4 eight says, There is a river whose streams make black the city of God. It's in Psalm 46. Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit bringing streams of living water. Have you heard of John 7.38? Jesus said, what is stream there? Look at the comparison. Streams. What is the stream representing? It is representing what? Come on now. Joy. Joy. It's not a physical river or anything. It's in your heart. It's, it's like... Why is he so passionate? Because there is joy. Number three. And I'm done. Pastor's almost standing up. One more minute he will start singing a song. Okay. Number three. God gives us security. Psalm 46 verse 5. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Hello. Security. Jesus gives us security. Number 4. Verse 11. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And then 11 says God fights for us and protects us. So protection. Number 4. Can you repeat those number four, uh, the four things that I told you? Peace, joy, security. If we have these four, think about it. Let's close our eyes and uh, let's just take a minute. We always do this. You know, I believe that after we hear God's word, we not to, need to look into ourselves. We need a time of meditation. And we only have 30 seconds. So I'm just going to lay it out there. You need to pick up some courage. How many of you are going to pray in the coming weeks? Lord, I need more of your presence. I want to see those hands. And every eye closed, please. This is the most important time. Whether you believe it or not, it's the most important time. Because the word of God never returns without fulfilling what its purpose for. How many of you are going to pray? Lord, I need more of your peace. Put your hand up. Thank you for those hands. Keep your hand up. I need your tangible presence, God. I need to hear from you. I need your tangible presence, God. I need to hear from you. Every eye closed. Put your hands straight up. 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 Because you know, God satisfies the desires of our heart. And don't look at the number of people in this church. It's not about numbers. It's about God's presence in your life. And God can do mighty miracles using the small church here. You believe that? Come on. If you believe that, stand up. Stand up if you believe that. Yes, Lord. Stand up. Hear that? They even cut away. Neither side of the Jew of the people. Very unpleasant. Me, younger. 